ILL. I and I, Gregory. Really hating me there on that response. Uh, wow. Wow is my takeaway from the second half of this game. Wow should probably be my takeaway from this entire 40-minute game. Illinois stars just starred more than I've seen any star star in a very long time, at least in this tournament. Um, can we just pause for a moment and appreciate 85, 69. So they didn't hit your 90 threshold. You're always waiting for Moreheads two best players combined for 50. Minix gets 27 on 21 shots. Lathan gets 23 on 22 shots. Thought they hit some tough ones. Thought they kind of went cold late because they just wore down over the course of the game. But for the most part, those two showed up. Illinois Stars said, okay, bet. All right, Terrence Shannon had 19 in the first half, finishes with 26. Uh, Dane Danger off the bench. I know you're happy. We'll get to that. 21 points, 9 for 9 from the floor. This was the best game that I've seen from him in an Illinois uniform in his career. And Brad Underwood deserves a bunch of credit for going to it so frequently. Uh, Coleman Hawkins had... Four rebounds, five assists, one block, two steals. He was everywhere, constantly making plays that helped Illinois get out in transition. He was two for three from three, including one step back iso off the dribble. Boom. Couldn't get enough of him. And then, oh, by the way, their fourth best player in this game had a triple-double. So, huh? Uh, wh <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that? I tweeted it. I'm getting Michigan Trey Burke year vibes from this Illinois team. And I'll elaborate on that later in the recap, but I, I am blown away by how many different players on this team can beat you. What'd you see tonight? I'm interested. I'm interested to unpack that later in this, but I'll ask this is Burke Shannon in this case. It's not necessarily a personnel one for one fit. It's more the mental and emotional of this team as they go, but gotcha. yes, okay. Shan Shannon would be the Burke here. Gotcha. You just didn't unpack that, but I mean, it, it it's almost it's almost unfair that you know Illinois has this type of talent, and we say it all the time, and I say it most of the times, and it, it started off as a joke, but it's it there is some seriousness to it. Is that if you're gonna want to beat Illinois, you cannot try to out Illinois them. Morehead State tried to out Illinois Illinois today, and. If there is a team across the country that wants to try to out, I don't know. I don't know what that team would be that can out Illinois, Illinois, because like you stated, Greg, you're getting 26 from Terrence Shannon. You're getting a triple double from Marcus Damas, a triple double in the tournament in Marcus Damas. I think this is Marcus Damas first tournament game. He said, ah, light triple double. Cause I was a little bit off today. My shot wasn't falling. I was only five for 14, but here's a little triple double for you. All right. They started out double teaming him out to 17 feet. Like they literally, the game plan for Moorhead was we can't let Marcus Damask beat us. And he said, all right, here's a triple double. <laughs> what? Right. And then, and then honestly, <laughs> I want to, I want to give you your flowers because you literally said this exact sentence in the preview. You said that Moorhead doesn't really have a big man, that Brad could go to Dane in this game. There's no one that can check him on Moorhead. Yeah. I, there was some special Dane moments in that. Dane, I thank you, brother. You made the first day of my tournament so enjoyable because the danger bag was on full display. Everything. Finished everything. Didn't miss a shot from the field. Three or four from the free throw line as well. Eight rebounds, two blocks, 21 points. Like, he was... It was great to watch, especially because, like, in the second half, it was like, Brad, it went off in his head. He's like, wait, they can't they can't mess with Dane. Let's just keep throwing it to Dane. Like, everyone get the ball to Dane, and it'll work out. So, like I said, this Illinois team will always be able to fall back on the fact that they got Damas, Shannon, and then Hawkins is just doing a little bit of everything. Gary A and Ty Rodgers didn't even score in this game. They got nine points off the bench from Luke Goody. Also, a Drake is Lawhorn. Um, little little moment there. Hit two threes in this game. Shout out to him. Stay ready. Uh, but yeah, it, if you're gonna try to out Illinois this Illinois team, this is how it's probably gonna end. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I yeah, everybody called that, and uh, I think they continue to be correct. You need to slow it down more. The hard part is like, in order to slow it down against Illinois, you have to get stops, and I don't know how you get stops against this team. Like, I unless you have Zach Eady at the rim, like, how, how are you supposed to stop this team? I don't know. I think that's a real question. So, like, 
I, it, look, there are certainly games where teams are going to stay hot. Let's not act like Moorhead didn't have a chance in this game. This was a tie game with uh, what? I, I don't I don't have the number in front of me from Ken Palm. Normally it's up by now, but it was a tie game early in the second half. Like it wasn't like this was a complete blow. It just speaks to what Illinois' offensive ceiling is that it can go from a tie game to a complete blowout in a four minute span. And the, I think it's what we say. What's the word? Avalanche. That was an avalanche. Mm-hmm. That was a, that was the Illinois avalanche. And um, I don't know what you're supposed to do about it. You're right. Dane was the story, though, which is crazy because Shannon could be the story or Damas could be the story. Damn near everybody should be the story here. But uh, Dane, uh, he goes to Dane. He sticks with Dane in the second half. Dane just delivered with some of the easiest scoring I've seen ever in a in an NCAA tournament game. He is unguardable. We've known he's unguardable. Unless you're Dane's size or bigger, he's unguardable. He's completely unguardable. Um, he did have the one, the Euro step move, reverse finish. Uh, somebody was tweeting at you saying, I've never seen that from you. You were like, that's my men's league footage. And then you were like, oh, for sure? Like, just squint. And then you put a clip of a video together that honestly looked very much like that move from Dane. <laughs> That 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 y- y- y'all don't understand. Men's let me give you a little insight to men's league card here. The left to right when a big man is guarding you is very, very tough to beat. Let me tell you. Because big men aren't usually expecting the left to right. Granted, I'm doing mine against accountants and engineers, but credit to Dane for pulling that out. And then the Euro with the left. Like in all actuality, though, like. Dane is an offensive weapon. Like it, it, it. Sometimes people think we're joking, but like he actually is very, like he's incredibly skilled for his size offensively, and obviously defensively he has his lapses, but also so does like the rest of the Illinois team. So like he kind of fits right in. So you know, it, as much as we want to praise Dane and the superstars for superstarring in this game. You also had to give some credit to Brad and his staff for like knowing like that's the move and going for it, which you pointed out in the past. That's one good thing that I think Underwood does. Like people kind of harp on his in-game adjustments and changes and things like that. The one thing I don't think you can ever doubt is when that man smells blood in a matchup, he's going to hunt that out. Whether it's Damas posting somebody up or getting Terrence Shannon downhill in this game was a little bit different. He saw that they couldn't check Dane. He just kept on feeding him. Yeah, and in your defense, Dane also did his tonight against future engineers and accountants. So hey, uh, hey, it worked out. It worked hey, out. Am, hey. am I wrong? Maybe I not wrong? engineers. Maybe not engineers. Maybe they're accountants. Uh, maybe good engineers. Maybe engineers who are very good in their men's leagues. I uh, Yeah, no, you're right, Brad. Brad played the hits. That's what we said we wanted, right? We want to see him play the hits. Play the hits. Illinois, play the hits. That's all we need. Give us the hits. He played the hits. He uh, Four minutes into this game. Well, sorry, let's start further back. One minute into this game, Illinois is down 9 nothing. Before I could even update my YouTube TV quad box, Illinois is down 9 nothing. Uh, then four to eight minutes in this game, some, somewhere in the first couple minutes, first or second media timeout, they come back with Brad with a microphone in front of him. They're like, Brad, they got off to a hot start. What happened? What are you seeing? He's like, well, it'd be nice if we showed some effort. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is why I can't ever take Illinois serious because it's it's March 21st in the first round of the NCAA tournament, and Brad is accurately saying we're not trying. That's tough for me to get over. It's really tough for me to get over. And uh, I guess the good news is they started trying, but like – I still, I don't know how to square the whole effort thing. Is he being sarcastic? Is he kidding? Because I thought the effort stunk in the first part of this game. No, I think he's being real. And it is something that bothers me and should bother people. Like, it it goes back to the, like, having to bench all five of your guys that have played over, like, 50 college basketball games because of effort. Like, there shouldn't be effort concerns or effort issues in an NCAA tournament game where it's win or go home. Like, that, that's crazy to me. Um... I, I I can't really wrap my head around that, but the thing is Brad wasn't lying and that's what was so like frustrating. But at the same time, all, all it does is force Illinois to score more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Cause it's like, I, I trust this team so much personnel wise and I trust Brad a lot, but I can't, I can't solve the effort thing mentally. I just can't. Cause He's right. Like in the first 10 minutes of this game, Illinois had an effort problem. 
and then it fixed and then they won huge but like I don't think you can win a national championship doing that and they're they're doing it and they're still winning but it's like I how has he not solved it yet how have the players not it's just strange it's really weird and uh, I don't think it plagued them in the Big Ten tournament much and that's probably why they won the Big Ten tournament but we got to solve it. But outside of that, like back to Brad playing the hits, we have Brad blasting his players effort correctly. Then we have Terrence Shannon dominating. Then we have uh, like <laughs> Dane off the bench. Great. Brad deserves credit for going and sticking with Dane. Brad deserves credit for going to DGL. You know, who didn't play in this game until garbage time, Nico Moretti. That hasn't been the case all season. And we we've been begging for it. We've been saying like, you got to play DGL. He has a higher ceiling than Moretti, and that paid off in this game. DGL came in, did some really good things defensively, hit two huge threes when you needed them, when it was still a close game. So, like, I, I come off of this game, man, being like, Brad nailed it. I thought Brad nailed everything he could do in the middle of that game to put his team in the best position to win. Yeah, play the, play the hits. Like, you got you got all these tools in the toolbox. Use them. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and look, I I do think Moorhead played well too. Like this wasn't like a, a yeah, Moorhead yeah. game that didn't show up. So yeah, I, I was gonna get into it. Uh, Riley Minix is a problem, actually. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Like he was an he was an NAIA player last year. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I that, forget the that's name crazy. Of the yeah, I'm I'm sure someone might make a call to him or two because he was at the start of that game. I was like, okay, what's going on? Like Riley Minix has Coleman Hawkins in hell. Like, yeah. he was going at Coleman and giving him, like, an array of bag moves, which had me rattled. But, yeah, like, you you stated it when we started this. Like, their two stars did star. It just it just couldn't outstar Illinois. Yeah, that's not how to beat Illinois. Uh, Illinois beat Moorhead on a night where Moorhead played well by 16 points. And Ty Rogers and Quincy Garrier combined for zero. Whoa. <laughs> like... I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, can I do my Michigan comp? Please. So the Michigan year that I'm talking about is the year they made the national championship game, lost to Louisville in the title. It was the first year that Michigan had gotten over the hump in March. Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway, Mitch McGarry, Glenn Robinson, Nick Stauskas. There's no shortage of talent. They were loaded. Uh, that year, it's it seems crazy looking back on it after what he became, but in that season at the time, Nobody believed in Beeline at Michigan as a March coach. Like he, he was a good coach and you believed in his roster, obviously, but he was not the, Oh my God, it's Beeline. He has the magic touch yet because the year before they had lost to Ohio, they had won the big 10 and then got upset to Ohio in the first round. So here you are and you've got the most talented team and you're on edge because everybody in the room knows you're the more talented team. And in that tournament, they drew, it was like South Dakota, I think, in the first round, and then VCU. And I went because I knew it was a special season. I was sitting in that building, and everybody's on edge before the game starts because you're just like, are they going to be nervous? Are they going to – what's going to happen? The demons, right? Midway through, it was a close game early on against South Dakota. Midway through, Mitch McGarry gets put into the game, and we very quickly realized there was no answer at all for Mitch McGarry. That was this day and danger performance. And I was watching it unfold, and I'm like, now, wait, wait a second here. Uh, I'm not saying Dane is Mitch. Mitch went to the NBA, and Dane is not that. But I think there is an element of, like, this guy who wasn't in our rotation for the whole season might be able to be, like, a key guy that helps us win these games in this tournament. And um, it it was really – sorry, I'm watching the end of this Nevada game. Dayton survives. Wow. Uh, uh, come back. Crazy. Gotta love March. Um, the the thing was, more often than not, in that tournament run, Michigan knew they had the best player on the floor in Burke. That's Illinois with Shannon. They knew that they had four other guys that any given night could beat you. Like you, Michigan could win a game that year because Hardaway could be the best player on the floor. Illinois can win a game because Damas can be the best player on the floor. Like, and then you got this wild card who wasn't there all season, who's torching teams in the post, who's really versatile. I don't know. That's the kind, the players one for one, the style is not the same, but the, the, how many different guys can beat you, the talent level, the best player on the floor, 
plus the added element of what happened that year for Michigan was along the way they realized there was no team more talented than them in the country. Like that's Michigan was squaring tournament demons with, oh my God, we are more talented than everyone. And then when they beat Kansas, when they had that moment, it validated it all and everything was free from there, right? Then they, then they go to Florida with nothing to lose, blitz them by 40. Then they go to Final Four with Syracuse. They're not scared. They were the better team. Like, I think this next game for Illinois is maybe the most critical game in the history of Illinois basketball. And I know that sounds insane, but if you win this game and if all the, the Brad Underwood second weekend rumors are put to death i think you're going to see this team look around and realize holy shit we're way more talented than iowa state kind of like i kind of like that because if you think about it like purdue's demons to me are that they haven't made the final four those are those are the demons to me illinois demon is that they haven't made a second weekend so they can exercise their demons early and then take a step back and be like whoa we got Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon and Coleman Hawkins. We score 90. We be fun. We better. We superstar. And like, you know, who knows what happens from there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to look ahead, but I'm just I'm envisioning the game between Iowa State and Illinois. And I'm envisioning that my bracket has Iowa State beating Illinois. And then I'm envisioning an Illinois team that just got over the hump, feels freed from the demons of we can't get to the second weekend. And all of a sudden looks at each other and the best three players on the court are all in orange. Like what stands between you and the second weekend is Duquesne. And we, how long have we said it? They were due for the luck. They were due for the bracket and they got the bracket. They got the bracket. Even if BYU won, to be honest with you, like now they got, now they really got it. So yeah. Exercise your demons. I really do. I know we'll have a preview up of the Illinois game tomorrow morning, but, uh, I think Moorhead was more dangerous than Duquesne will be for this team. So we'll I see. Too. Um, I give I give them all the credit in the world. Great performance. Congrats to Daddy Brad. And uh I can't Nevada really just closed the game on a twenty four to four run, letting Dayton come back and beat them. That that hurts me. It doesn't hurt me. I picked Dayton, so I'm good. Watch.